remember the day I realized that my parents were old. I was in the second grade and had been noticing the differences between my friends' parents and my own. The moms had smooth faces, the dads had hair, and they all seemed to be active and involved in their children's lives. My parents weren't. Too tired, they'd say, while watching footballs and drinking martinis in their matching recliners. Too tired. One afternoon, while helping my dad with yard work, I asked the question that had been keeping me awake at night. Are you and mom going to die? <laughs> he stood up and took a deep breath, knowing that this is one of parenting's big questions. Everyone dies eventually, sweetheart, he said, resting his hand on my shoulder. It's just a natural part of life. No, I mean, are you and mom going to die, like, now? <laughs> because that's what I believed. My parents were so obviously old and infirm that I figured they could drop dead at any moment. <laughs> I lived in fear of being called into the principal's office. I'm sorry to have to tell you that your parents have dropped dead. <laughs> Stacy, they were very, very old. <laughs> when I was born, my mom and dad were 38 and 40, respectively. When my son was born, I was 40 and my husband was 43. That was five years ago which means that I could drop dead any minute. <laughs> How we got here is a shining example of what a jackass biology can be. When my body was ready for pregnancy, I was a freaking idiot, with a bong in one hand and a stack of maxed out credit cards in the other. <laughs> and when I had finally grown up enough to be a parent, my eggs had fallen and they couldn't get up. When we signed the adoption papers the day after our son was born, my husband and I were as ready for parenthood as two people could possibly be. Most of that is due to the rigorous nature of the adoption process. Nobody accidentally adopts a baby. There are no reality shows called, I didn't know I was adopting. <laughs> Not when you have to submit to an FBI background check, fill out a 20-page questionnaire designed to make you wonder if you might actually be a serial killer after all and have a social worker come to your home and point out everything that's likely to kill your theoretical child before his first birthday. As a side note, if any of you are struggling to get pregnant and someone tells you you should just adopt, you have my permission to slap that person really, really hard. So yes, we were prepared, much in the same way a medical student is prepared to perform surgery for the first time. They've studied everything there is to study, they've watched others do it, but they've never actually put scalpel to flesh and holy God, that's a lot of blood. <laughs> Preparation, as any actual parent will tell you, is worth absolutely nothing when you're being woken up every two hours for three months straight. Preparation wilts in the face of a category five up the back blowout in the middle of Target. <laughs> My husband David and I told ourselves that things would get easier as our son got older. That once he was sleeping through the night, or potty trained, or driving himself to college, <laughs> life wouldn't be so bone-crushingly exhausting. But as he got older, so did we. One of the hardest things about being an older parent is that you remember vividly what life was like before you had a child. You have years of memories to draw on. Memories of free time and weekends and impulsive decisions, of staying awake past 8.30 <laughs> and having conversations that don't involve counting to three in a very stern voice. <laughs> you remember all of those things and you remember them with the knowledge that you will never have them again. <laughs> and then you fall asleep because your child woke you up before dawn by jumping on your head. Our son Xander is an amazing, beautiful miracle of a child. And I don't want you to think for a moment that we regret anything, because we don't. This is a child who was desperately wanted and fought for. But he is, as they say in the parenting books, a handful. First, it was his size. At three months old, he weighed 20 pounds and could no longer fit in his infant car seat. I'm pretty sure my chiropractor has a boat named after him. <laughs> <laughs> 
When Xander was two, he ran up to give me a hug, but instead gave me a black eye when his giant head connected with my face. <laughs> Today, his giant head houses a giant brain that regularly outsmarts his sad old parents. When we, when we play Monopoly, he's the banker, and he beats the ever-loving crap out of us. Most of the time, I'm afraid to leave him alone, because if I do, I'm pretty sure he'll figure out how to make a bomb out of toothpaste and Legos. <laughs> Once, after being told he couldn't do something he wanted to do, my son, the boy who will someday choose my nursing home, <laughs> looked me straight in the eye and said, I think it's really sad that you had to wait so long to be a mommy, and now you're really bad at it. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> True story. <laughs> My grandmother used to have a framed cross stitch on her wall that said, the people who come into your life will either be a blessing or a lesson. I believe my son is both. I remember wh what my life was like before he came along, but I also can't imagine it without him. If I'd become a mother in my 20s, I would have had more energy, but less sense. And more importantly, that child wouldn't have been this child, this brilliant smart ass of a child. We were supposed to be together, he and I. I know that like I know my own name. Yes, I wish I had more energy. And yes, I wish I could somehow catch up on all the sleep I've lost over the last five years. But if I had it to do all over again, I'd do it all over again, just the same way. Because when he made that crack about me being a bad old mommy, I didn't get mad, I laughed. I laughed until I fell down. <laughs> until he finally had to abandon his tantrum and laugh with me. I don't know if I could have done that in my 20s. But in my 40s, I have the wisdom to look at the long game. Someday, that boy is gonna be a teenager. And when he is, I'm gonna make it my job to embarrass him as often and as publicly <laughs> as possible. I just have to stay alive that long. Thank you.